In this section, we're going to be learning about integer properties. And we're going to start with integer division. So we, we've seen division. Here's y divided by x. And integer division is a very specific kind of division. And that is, it's actually the kind we did in grade school, uh, where we say it'll divide in there. How many times will it go in there? And what's the remainder? So it's always a whole number. It's always an integer is the quotient is always an integer. And then if there are a remainder, the remainder is also written as an integer. So um, that's different than um, floating point division or real division, uh, which gives you the decimal point when you divide. So this is a different kind of division than you get when you put it in a calculator. So we'll work with this integer division, and we'll always have um, integer quotients. So the answer will always be an integer. And if there's a remainder, it will be an integer as well. Now we're going to learn some new terminology. And here we have this you know, x divided by y, I mean y divided by x. But we can say that x divides y. Oh, I'm not going to capitalize that. That x divides y if two things x cannot be equal to zero so x is not zero you can't ever divide by zero right so that's always a rule so x is not zero the other one is if if there's no remainder or the remainder is zero so it divides it evenly is what that say it um, x x divides um, y evenly and so that's what that term, that pipe means. X pipe Y means X divides Y. And that means you do this Y divided by X and you get no remainder. So it divides in there evenly. So what are a couple that would divide evenly? So we might have um, six divides 24, right? So that's true. On the other hand, if we have six divides 17, that's not true, right? So that doesn't work. It has to go in evenly. So it could be 18, or it could be 36, or it could be 360. So lots of things that six could divide into evenly. And that's what that terminology means, is that it, it divides it evenly. Now, some interesting things about integer math. If you have, uh, let's say that we, we know that 6 divides 24, and we know that 6 divides 12, right? Then we can also say that 6 divides, uh, it can be uh, anything. So it, 12 uh, times anything, another integer. Remember, we're working only with integers, plus uh, 24 times an, any other integer. So when you have multiples, right, if 6 divides either both of these values, then you can say 6 divides the sum of these values multiplied by integers. So there's a proof in there. I'll, I'll show you this example, right? So this example, if we do that, if we take, if we take um, 12 times s, so 12s plus 24y or 24t, and we divide that by six, what do what do we get? We know that we can take the 12 and we divide it into each of the factors, so we get 2s plus uh, 4t. And, and that's even, there's no remainder, right? Because six divided in this term evenly and six divided in this term evenly. And so we still end up with an integer. So it divides evenly. Now that's just an example. Uh, there's, a, there's the proof in the book. So the, in the textbook, it walks through the proof that proves it's that case for every value um, if it divides evenly. So when you have something like this where you sum the multiples of something that divides evenly, we call that a linear combination. And this can really vary, like this does, This could be anything that six divides evenly, this one and this one, and the s and the t can be any integer. 
So um, now it actually works with real numbers too, but we're focused right now on uh, integer, right? On integer properties. So we're only going to talk about it in when we're using integers with it. So that's called a linear combination. 